Shannon, where are we going? Venice. Oh, I feel like I've chuckled on. We don't do this. <laughs> I'm including that. No. <laughs> Venice, the city that floats on water, a labyrinth of canals and narrow alleys, steeped in a history as rich as the tiramisu that melts in your mouth. Mmm. Welcome, my friends. I'm Journeyman Ram, and together we're exploring the city of Venice for the next three days. But you know what? Venice isn't just a city. It's a living, breathing piece of art, a testament to human ingenuity and resilience. And like any great piece of art, it's appreciated up close. So buckle up, folks. We got 72 hours, a camera, and an appetite for adventure. But to start this adventure, let me show you exactly what you shouldn't do when you ride by train to Venice. All right, guys, so we just took a train ride from Lake Como, a direct train to Venice. And we are in Venice, which is pretty fucking awesome. Uh, we're seeing a lot on this trip here. And this guy just came up to us and it's a porter service. So what they do, since it's all, you know, pretty much done through boats, is they take your luggage to the hotel. And I believe we just walk and meet him there with the luggage. So uh, hopefully, that's what he's doing, and hopefully he's not stealing our luggage right now. What? We're gonna go with him. Yeah, I know. Oh. I'm just thinking, like, what if he's just like, I don't know. Just a random guy. I don't know what he could be doing. I have more trust in if you didn't hear Shan, she said, I need to have more trust in people. While I usually agree with her, in this moment, I was actually right. See, these porter guys, they don't take your luggage to the hotel. For 20 US dollars, they take it about 50 feet away, just about right here to the first canal where you will then load your luggage on a boat that will then take you to your hotel, which also costs like 80 bucks. So word of advice, don't use the porter service. But for now, let's go back to the point right before I found out I was getting ripped off. I don't know, you don't know. Still yeah. <laughs> so yeah, we got two days in Venice, lots to see, lots to do. And while yes, we do have a lot to see and do, I think it's important that we first understand how Venice became the city it is today. Venice, a city that's more water than land, is a puzzle of 118 islands, all stitched together by over 400 bridges. Pretty crazy to think that Venice literally has never had a traffic jam, except maybe by boats. But now let's rewind to Venice in its infancy, back to the fifth century. The mighty Roman Empire was on its last legs and barbarians were knocking at the door. The people of the Veneto mainland, looking for a safe haven, found it in the islands of the Venetian Lagoon. They were the unwitting founders of what would become a maritime powerhouse. They built the foundation of Venice by driving long wooden poles into the marshy land, creating solid base for the buildings. This is why Venice seems to be floating on water. And get this, the iconic St. Mark's Basilica is standing on a staggering one million wooden piles. It's crazy. Fast forward to the 13th century and Venice was a city state to be reckoned with. A titan of international trade, it was a perfect bridge between East and West. This was truly the golden age of Venice, a time of flourishing art, architecture, and commerce. And here's a little nugget for you. Venice was the home of the world's first public casino. Established in 1638, the Rodato was the place to be if you were feeling lucky. Move over, Vegas. Today, Venice stands as a testament to endurance, a city that sprang from the lagoon and stood against the tides of time. Now that we know a little bit about Venice's backstory, it's now 2023, and Shannon and I are trying to find our hotel. While Venice is small enough to walk end to end in just a few hours, it is easy to get lost. If you're only in Venice for a few days, the neighborhood you decide to stay in will make sightseeing a whole lot easier. Here are my top three neighborhoods in Venice if you're visiting for just a few days. I'm also gonna relate them to an Italian dish so you get an idea of the vibe. First, we have San Marco. This is the heart and soul of Venice, home to many of the most important landmarks and locations in the city, such as St. Mark's Square and the Rialto Bridge. It's packed with many of the top attractions and things to do. If we were to compare it to an Italian dish, it would probably be a classic margarita pizza. Traditional, beloved by all, and a must try for any visitor. Next up, we have San Paolo, one of the oldest, liveliest, and most heavily touristed neighborhoods in the city. San Paolo is well connected to San Marco and the city's top attractions. It's like a plate of spaghetti carbonara. Classic, popular, and always a crowd pleaser. And third, we have Dorso Giro, defined by art, and in my opinion, is the Brooklyn of Venice. This is where you'll find walls adorned with street art and some of the most famous and unique art galleries in the city. It's like a colorful plate of antipasta. Vibrant, diverse, and full of hipsters. Canarigio and Castello are also popular neighborhoods, but if you're only there for a few days, I'd recommend staying closer to the main attractions. Shannon and I stayed in San Marco at Hotel Saturnia, a spot we highly recommend. The hotel itself was made from a 14th century palace that offers a historic charm and modern amenities. It's located in the heart of San Marco, super close to San Marco Square. 
literally walking distance. Fun fact, Ray Charles also stayed there in 1989 and was so impressed that he left a note to the hotel on his last day, stating, quote, everything was just beautiful and it gave me the chance to catch up on some much needed rest. Absolute legend. All right, what is up my friends? Cheers, day two in Venice. Currently drinking a Hugo Spritz. It's the cousin of Aperol Spritz, but made with white wine. Uh, we are currently walking to the Jewish ghetto. It's supposed to be a nice neighborhood to check out in uh, the outskirts of Venice. But overall, thoughts? This place is fucking awesome. Venice was told, to, uh, I was told that Venice was kind of touristy and all that, but yeah, it is. But there's so much cool history. There's so many cool little streets and alleyways. Epic, just music everywhere. It's just such a unique city with all the canals. Shannon's <laughs> taking a video of me. Um, Behind the scenes. You're fucking up my, you're fucking it up. You fucked up the whole thing. I'm just kidding. But yeah, if you guys remember from the first video I posted when we got in from the train station, do not use one of those guys that take your luggage bags because it's a scam. Shannon thought she could trust it. Don't trust it. Don't use those guys. Um, but do come to Venice. We're gonna post some more stuff. We're actually going to the Venice Film Festival tonight, which is happening this week, once a year. We happen to be this week, so we're going. And then other than that, there's a gondola race we might have to check out. And we wanna go on a gondola ourselves, so stay tuned, y'all. All right, so we got the Venice Film Festival and the gondola race on the itinerary. But those only happen once a year. So I'm gonna start with some of the most obvious things you gotta see. First, you have to check out Piazza San Marco. It's the main square you'll see everyone hanging out in and is home to some of Venice's crown jewels, St. Mark's Basilica, the Campanile, and Doge's Palace. St. Mark's Basilica, Venice's symbol of wealth and power, is a marvel of architecture, a blend of east and west that tells Venice's golden age. It was originally built to store St. Mark's relics, and when I say relics, I mean his dead body that was stolen from Alexandria, Egypt when it came under Muslim control. This story is even depicted in the stained glass of the Basilica that you can see for yourself. Just a short walk from the Basilica, you'll find Doge's Palace. Doge's Palace was the residence of the Doge. No, not that Doge. This Doge was the elected leader of the Venetian Republic. One weird thing about it though, is that it also contained the city's prisons, which is connected to the palace by the Bridge of Sighs. It is said the name comes from the prisoners sighing at their last view of Venice as they cross the bridge. Pretty sad to think about. But no more prison talk. No one's getting arrested on this trip. It's time to find a gondola to show you guys what it's all about. All right, so obviously one of the main things you do in Venice is go on a gondola, which is what we're on right now. We're currently going under the Rialto Bridge. It's the most famous, biggest bridge in Venice. And you can see on the right and left, there's a whole bunch of people lined up like they're watching me and Shannon drink this wine. That's not the case. It's actually, there's a gondola race going on on this big ass canal. This is also the largest canal in Venice. It's called the Grand Canal. And it seems like that's what everyone's lining up for is to watch the, the gondola racers. So it seems like a cool thing to watch. I recommend doing it. I know it's kind of cliche, but pretty cool. So look how much we're leaning just to get under this bridge. If we were to stand up right, the gondola would hit the top of it. So just, just goes to show it's a technique. He's tipping. I feel like I'm about to go in the water. So if you guys are wondering how much, how much? this thing costs, these guys are racking $80 for 20 to 30 minutes. So if your career sucks and you want to move to Italy, you can become a gondola driver and make some good cash. Only in the summer. And if it, water comes too high, the gondolas can't get under the bridges, so you might be fucked. So one thing you guys will also notice, you see how there's a, a glass plate that comes above where the original window is? Oops. It's because when the water levels get so high, flooding will just take over the city. And so the way people have been combating it is by literally setting up things like that up right of their houses. It's crazy. Beautiful. Good job. Should I start doing that? 
I think I got pipes. I think I got those pipes. I don't know, Shannon, you think I got that? I mean, Let me hear it, Shannon. No. So we are currently on the way to the Venice Film Festival. I've never been to a film festival. I've always heard of the Tribeca one. I've always heard of this Venice one. I never thought I'd be in Venice to go to it. But what do you know, while we're here, they say that the film festival is this whole week. And so me and Shan are going to the island of Lido. Funny enough, the film festival is not technically on the island of Venice here. You have to go to another island of Lido. That's where they're showing the film. And the concierge service at our hotel said that if you want to see some celebrities, go there. So I'm going to go and we're going to see some celebrities and I'm going to teach them the gay dance. So stay tuned. All right, guys, we are here live at the annual, 79th annual Venice Film Festival. We just got here and we watched the movie and it was pretty cool. It was that one actually right there with Penelope Cruz. It's called Himenesita, I think. Good movie, I liked it, Shannon cried. But we're trying to figure out what's going on here. There's a whole bunch of people, it seems like they're waiting for someone. It might be a celebrity or something. This is pretty cool. This is where the red carpet is and all the celebrities come out at that you see on the news. I guess that's another theater. I have no idea what's in there. But me and Shannon are curious and we want to figure out what these people are waiting for. So uh, Shannon, Shannon's going to go ask. Let's go ask. Let's go ask. All right, <laughs> Shannon, let's see what you got. Can I ask you something? Why are you asking? Who are you waiting for? Um, where? Cody Colin Farrell? Was he coming out? Tomorrow. Oh. So you stay here for tomorrow? Yes, because they're at Harry Styles fan. Oh, your Harry Styles? It's coming tomorrow? So you're sleeping here? So if, you, if we go away, they take our place. Oh. Wow. Oh, wow. So you want to get the front row spot? Yes. yes. Wow. Well, I think you guys are good. You guys are, <laughs> that's, that's funny. Should we stay? For Harry Styles? For Colin. Colin. Okay. We got some Colin fans here. Cool. Well, thank you. Yeah, they're good. We got some big fans. Yeah. We love for Florence Pugh. For who? For Florence Pugh. Just me. Oh, just her. You guys are here for Harry Styles? Yeah. Okay, nice. Is that okay. movie coming here? Oh, it's it's getting. <laughs> oh wow! Wait, so it's premiering here tomorrow for the first time. Wow! Yeah, we're going back to New York tomorrow. Uh oh. All right, my friends. All good things must come to an end. Shannon and I are now headed to the airport. We're leaving Venice. Honestly, in some style on this Venetian limousine. It picked us up directly from the back of our hotel, which was super convenient. Picked up all our bags. Uh, yeah, awesome. But overall, I hope you guys enjoyed this trip. We saw a lot, did a lot, met a lot of cool people. And hopefully it gave you guys some inspiration to come to Italy on your next trip and see all the beautiful things this country has to offer. If you liked it, please like this video and subscribe. And uh, stay tuned for some more content and videos. Shan, anything to say? What an epic trip. There you go. <laughs> All right, Journeyman Ram out. Peace, y'all.